Remember one politician to name him Damian Crawford. They just say Black History Month not relevant in Jamaica because it's an American thing and it was done because black people is a minority in America and them the need for have a Black History Month. And we are say non apologetically that the same thing will reach the black people them in America not knowing them history. It's not because them those it's not because them have white people in front of them. Because we don't have no white people in front of we are we don't know nothing about black history. We don't know nothing about our ancestor legacy. We don't know about Egypt, Ethiopia, Ghana, Senegal, Gambia, and you name them. We don't know nothing about them. We don't know what the people them who bring us to this part here. We reach us up, we ancestors we they stand up and fight. We don't know nothing. We don't even know nothing about Marcus Gavi and see that Gavi is from Jamaica. So when a man I talk about Black History Month was created in America by uh, uh, look at the man who created Black History is a black man. We don't do you know nationality, is a black man. Yes, so we know say and we understand that Black History Month is a very relevant month. This is the time we must use it and reflect. Just like how Christians use Easter and reflect upon the death of Jesus Christ. Just like how them use Valentine and reflect and say love, 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 love. Yes, we use Black History Month to reflect upon our Africanness and the things them that we got through and the things them that we should want to be in at this time, yeah, knowing ourselves. So we continue. We continue the journey of reflection. That is what we call it, the journey of reflection, reflecting of at least what we call it, Sankofa. Sankofa, where you look back and see what you can do in the future or in the present. So Black History Month, very relevant, especially in Jamaica, when the people them so last. What do you mean? Out of black come forth light, out of black come forth white. A reality that. So as we say, Carter Woodson create what we call Black History Week to become Black History Month. You know, miseducation of the Negro. Very good book to read. Neg People don't read again, but we know so you can't find it in where you call all your farms and all these things. So for those of you interested, go find that book. That is the man who after that book is the man who re responsible for giving us. You know, some people say, why is it that Black History Month after being at the shortest month? You'll see all of them say that, you know, them still not nah, do nothing when Black History Month come, you know. All of them say, then why we have to have Black History Month? Look here, Black History can't in a one month, you know, but guess what? This is a time when you have to go introspective, and look for certain things in yourself and say, watch out. We need to come know some African history. We need to come understand what is it that African people contribute to civilization. Even though they make it sound like we don't contribute nothing to civilization. But we know, so it's like them I tell, and them write you out of history. Yeah, them write you out of history. We know that too. We we'll write out our history in some terrible way. But we're not going to make it continue that we're there. We're not going to make it continue. So we have people who, we we'll call now, indelibly put it down, not only in a book, but in a electronic media. Paul Bogle, one of the things them that we should remember. We should remember that man in Stony Gut, that man in Moran Bay, who walked from Moran Bay to Spanish Town more than one time too. Yes. So these men died, give them life to say African people in this part of the world can have some fear. Justice. Justice. But all we say in these things, we know that the slave mill still a grind slow. It a grind slow, but it a still a grind. African people seem not to remember things. 
them wash out your brains. For some people, them not care about them something there. Especially the youth, them. The youth, them who in a certain position in a Jamaica, monetarily and financially, and them in a them job, and I look forward to move up into the society. Them not even interested in nothing where we are talking about Africa and, you know, history and them something there. Because them are live for the time and the moment. But it is really a disrespect for no say, people come before you and do certain things that you can do as so. And then you don't even recognize them. You don't even recognize the work that them do. And it's very important that you recognize the work them that them do. Because it's that work sustain your great grandmother and your great grandmother mother and your granny mother and now your mother which is now. So we have to understand how the three hundred and sixty degree event the three hundred and sixty three sixty six sorry, three hundred and sixty event really have something to do with you because what goes around come around and we know that eventually you will be an ancestor and you would hope that your children children recognize the work that you did for your grandchildren and that is really very important all grandfathers and grandmothers is happy when them say them grandchildren is moving ahead in life. And if those grandchildren don't remember them grandparents, well, the event of time will cut off and then it will leave a very strange situation, position, where we're just floating. We're just floating. Marcus Gavin said, people without a knowledge of them history. It's like a tree without root. So we want to stop the slave mill from grinding continuously. We don't want it just a grind and a grind and a grind continuously. So that's man keep us singing the same thing over and over. Look how long Bob Marley did and we still have to sing him song them and it come like it new. Them children should not play. Them should have hang up in a museum or a listen to a gramophone or a CD. But it is, you play it now and it's so relevant. So all of the things that was fought for, all those so-called heroes that came and fight. Why are we still fighting after so much years when other nations is moving ahead? The problem with black people is that meanwhile other nations that teach them children about science and technology and agriculture and all them things there. We are teach our children how to read Bible and pray upon them knee. That's why the slave mills still are grind. We have a bridge in a antagonized way. About Prince Emmanuel and where we never say and where we should have said and all them up there. And here comes now a bridge in say, this is a time when the Ethiopian African Black International Congress, otherwise known as the Bubble House, is keeping them what them call it? Christmas celebration. When last you take up a book and read it? Uh, when last you go up on your iPhone and find something of interest as it relates to African people and really listen to it and watch it? We need to do that, you know. We need to do it. We need to make people we pick them have a time when them can really analyze with themselves situations that we get confronted with. Because right now the thing rough out there where well, we don't see it. We don't have to say it. It rough out there. And them there are them yard. Because all the them go there and listen to me now. Take up a book, man. Take up a book. We don't talk about your, your regular school book. Or take your laptop and search, put in the search, Google historians, black historians are things that relate to Africa. 
Just put it in, in your Google search, and check it out. You'd be pleasantly surprised, man. Because you can't say no no again, you know. You can't say no no again. Anything where you want to know, anything where you want to know, you put it, you Google it, and you find it come up straight for you. It's like the man knows how you personally want to know about that or see it. Yeah, man. And we have to come learn that from our own. If I hear them talk about the black hole in the sky and darkness, out of darkness come forth light. And we have to come learn that from our own, man. All of those little figurative languages that we hear in a them time there. We never know, say, we could have come now, come decipher it. Yeah, come decipher it. You know, the pyramids. White people, through them not understand how it make them want to say they say some spirit people make it. And then them have black people start to say it too. <laughs> yeah, man, them have black people start to say it too. It's like how oh, you have some people not talk about the world flat. We gone back in a Christopher Columbus craziness. After we come see cosmology, you know, and come show us and realize eh, certain things where eh, the man them in a, the, the, the Timbuktu in a door guns, the door guns. Google the door guns and see what you say. The door guns out of Mali. Who could have looked in at the stars? And see the configuration of the stars them and see how it relates to certain things. You understand? Real things when I talk about like a supernatural thing. And when man can't explain and comprehend what them seeing or what them hearing, them start to give it over to some supernatural being. When them can't explain it. A man can't explain something or it becomes mysterious to him. We have to come out of that because everything can be explained. It's just that the knowledge not reach your brains yet, but everything can be explained naturally. Naturally. When people put a whole heap of little language, metaphors and allegories and mythologies for certain things, it can be explained. But it's a whole heap of the things them come to a second and third and fourth and fifth and I will never really go there go find out how it start, the beginning of the thing. It's very, it's very important that we find out the beginning, the beginning of a lot of these stories that was told to us. A lot of these stories. And them use certain things to mask it, just like how we talk about Brother Nancy. Nobody thinks they are a spider talk. Nobody. These religious people are talking about um, Joshua command son to stand still and donkey attack to people and all them something there. A man had chewed down rather than a tongue snake. Them believe those things. But when we tell them about brother Nancy out of the Atlantic Kingdom in Ghana, them I say, no, 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 go so. When we tell them, say, them have stories in Ghana that the golden stool out of the sky come from. And the chief, them, the female, them decide who are going to sit down upon it. You know, the Jewish tradition, them have something named the Ark of the Covenant, where them represent the, the presence of God. And we now start to accept these little peripheral stories. Peripheral stories. And deny our African-centered perspective that is really ours. Not what people give it. People give it things to enslave or carry us back into slavery. When everybody are talking about how to develop science and how to deal with technology and everything, we sit down and bend down and pray, 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 pray. And when us to say the prayer is not working, look how much criminality and crime are going on in Jamaica. Look how much, look how much prayers are going up a man going to church to kill a man. In an arbor view, years ago, a man going to the church and kill people in there. You know, see, a man I pray about COVID, COVID, COVID. And him can't pray with the COVID. Him can't get going to the, the, the hospital and the man get with the COVID. So that is how deep the brainwashing is. Deep. Pacify way. The stories in the New Testament pacify way, man. Would have it fight, but because them say this and that and turn on a cheek and all them something, pacify way. Black people, 
we not see your situation, not see your position. You are instead of instead of we get up for do for ourselves, we are trying to make other Thanks people do it for we. And, keep listening. and the people who we all do it for we do have all we into consideration, nor our parents, nor our four parents into consideration, nor our children. So them carry go out them school and university for indoctrinate to rather than educate we. And when we come out of school, we we set ourselves right in. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And we one of the part them that fit into the jigsaw puzzle. We fit into it because we have them education or them indoctrination in a way. And when we hear ourselves, when we see ourselves, we start to condemn it. When we hear about Africa, it's like a bad word, Africa. We are talking about Africa, pay people and young people and cause people and war with people in Africa. And they don't realize that white people kill white people more than oh, anybody else in the world kill themselves. That is a reality. We say it again, and we say it again, and we say it again. The wickedest war them was part was World War I and World War II, where millions of white people are killed millions of white people. The Germans them go bomb London, the, Ger- the French, this go bomb that, 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 and kill one another. But all we can hear, boy, black wicked, he'll go black and kill black. Every human being kill every human being. But guess what? I know every human being, group, take people from them land, and enslave them and take away them land and try to wipe them out. But guess what? We survive. We survive. So we have to really understand how it go. Because if we had known then what we know now, trust me, it would be a different thing if we had known then what we know now. This is the cutting edge uh, people hear about the symbols referred to in the song and see it as devil symbols yeah man because when we know about all the oblique oblique you know the, the the washington monument is patterned off of egyptian um oblique even at ethiopia which is almost like a phallic symbol for those of you who don't know what a phallic symbol is, a phallic symbol represents an erected penis. Yes. And that that obliques what is in Washington was designed uh, for the Egyptian obliques them, which is also in Ethiopia, which them stole one and carried it go to uh, Italy. And I think them carried it back. But a lot of symbols, African symbols, is recognized as devil worship. And we can speak of one like the the Ankh, A-N-K-H, Ankh. The Ankh, that is a whole heap of one wear who claim consciousness instead of wearing a cross around them neck. Like myself, who wear an Ankh, and an Ankh represents life. And the beauty about the ankh is that it represents the womb of the woman and the man. The woman and the man, the, the, the womb of the woman, and also the phallic symbol of the man. If you look at it, it's not a cross where them say Jesus Christ died on a cross. And why most people wear the cross is because the Christian them teach them about Jesus dead on a cross. And you know, there's a part in the Bible that says Jesus Christ was hanged on a tree. We have to figure out where he was. Was he on a tree or was he in Galgota? Galgota is a place in a Jerusalem there. They call it the Rock of Skulls. But the Ankh represents something much more meaningful than the cross. Because when I used to go to church, I hear them say the cross represents suffering and shame because Jesus Christ died on the cross and suffered in shame. Well, who want to wear something that is suffering and shame around them neck? I am wondering if they had electrocuted Jesus Christ, if everybody would wear a <coughs> electrical chair around them neck, or if them would hang him with a rope, which is that part of the Bible, say, 
if them would have walked with a rope round them neck. Because it's an emblem of suffering and shame. And we come to the ank as a liberating force. As a force where carry us forward we are into the chemetic line. And now we hear says a devil symbol. That is what them always do. Them take with things and demonize it like oh Hitler take the short sticker. The short sticker is not European. You can look in at Ghana and see one of the the Adinkra um symbols with the Adinkra symbol as a swastika turned the other way. And there is Adinkra symbols in the, 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 the windows of the Lalibela churches. Yes, some of the windows them have the Adinkra symbol, as we call the Adinkra symbol, but it's really something far than that. It's like the sun in the Lali, in the church of Lalibela in Ethiopia. You see that symbol? And then now we see Hitler with that symbol and people is scared if you start to walk up and down with that symbol and if you tell them say it's not he's not no white supremacist uh, he's not healing hitler them don't care about that them don't care about that because we recognize and we understand the meaning of those symbols it's an african thing but we were not taught that so when we wear it we get demonized and then we don't want to wear it, but they make we wear a cross. What the hell you have a cross on your neck for? It's a suffering and shame. Why would you want to wear something that is a suffering and shame around your neck? You know why you wear it? Because you don't know what it is. You follow in fashion. You follow in something that they gave you. And you never investigate it. You never investigate why you have a cross on your neck. All you know is that Jesus did for the cross. So everybody want to have a dead man put a little cross around him neck. Them call, some of them call rosary. Where the Roman Catholic them have around them neck, the rosary. Terrible thing. Terrible thing how them brainwash we. And we still continue on that brainwashing. The symbols is very important to the, the advancement of a certain kind of people over our next people. The control and the manipulation of a people. Part of it is the control by using symbols. Symbols is very important to certain things. Because when you can when you can read, they put symbols to make you understand the symbols rather than putting letters and words. They put symbols. And symbols is very important in control. Yes, you can't talk about stoplight. You can't talk about the little when you drive on the highway. You see some little triangle and them know says falling rocks. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, this is the cutting edge. Who wrote the Bible? Who wrote the Quran? Who wrote all of these books? We are told that it was divinely inspired by men of all. Oh, we know that. Oh, we know the intentions. Because we interpret. That's all we're doing, interpret and hold it by faith. So when we look upon the situation now, and we, tell, we have a choice between Africa and America. If you check the youth them again, you see say the youth them want to go to America, the land of opportunity and bliss. Most of them are dream about America. They not dream about Africa. Most of you now dream about Africa. Them don't even know what to dream about if them say Africa. All them know is when them sit on television about Africa. You know, them don't see no life in Africa. You understand? Them just hear say, don't want to poor and suffering and thing. Did you know when them say Haiti is the, the poorest country on earth? Them say, them say Haiti. Haiti have 10 million people and guess what? Jamaica have more coronavirus cases than Haiti. Think about that. Think about that. Too late, said Oberica, sadly. Our own men and our sons have joined the ranks of the stranger. They have joined his religion, 
and they helped to uphold his government. If we should try to drive out the white men in Umwafia, we should find it easy. There are only two of them. But what of our own people who are following their way and have been given power? They would go to Umuru and bring the soldiers, and we would be like Abame. He paused for a long time and then said, I told you on my last visit to Mbanta how they hanged Aneto. What has happened to that piece of land in dispute? asked Okonkwo. The white man's court has decided that it should belong to Nama's family, who had given much money to the white man's messengers and interpreter. Does the white man understand our custom about land? How can he, when he does not even speak our tongue? But he says that our customs are bad, and our own brothers, who have taken up his religion, also say that our customs are bad. How do you think we can fight when our own brothers have turned against us? The white man is very clever. He came peaceably and quietly with his religion. We were amused at his foolishness and allowed him to stay. Now he has won our brothers, and our clan can no longer act like one. He has put a knife on the things that held us together, and we have fallen apart. The Council of Nicaea uh, was an effort by, by Constantine to control the people through military and through religion. Whoever can control your concept of God has a weapon more powerful than, than, than any physical weapon, than any sword, any, any gun, any atomic weapon. Whoever controls how you relate to the unseen presence of God will not only control you, but can control your children and your children's children. So it was at the Council of Nicaea that the Constantine, this emperor, needed to find a way to consolidate his power because the people that he conquered in various parts of the world had different religions, different, different ideologies. And it was at <coughs> Nicaea where he brought together these theologians, these, these scholars, if you will, to hammer out one uniform theology that everyone would follow. And if Constantine could convince people to take Jesus as God on earth and change that he was a human being, then they could take over the control of the Catholic Church and make one. So they invited. And one of the priests was an African known as Arius. Bishop Arius. There's a book called Blacks Who Died for Jesus by Mark Hyman. It gives the story of Arius. Arius now gets word that Constantine knows Arius is coming to, to dispute this. Because he's saying, how are you going to tell people this? That nobody's going to believe that story. That, that Immaculate Conception? Come on, you know, that's written on the walls of Egypt. That's a mythology. That's an analogy. You're not supposed to believe that story. That's a nice story to live by, that each and every one of us has Jesus within us, and every birth is an Immaculate Conception. But there was no one boy born as the Son of God to freak. Come on, you, 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 you can't. Constantine said, look, come on over here. Nice here. I'm going to talk to you. He found out that he was going to be assassinated. So he fled into Europe with his followers. Arius and his followers became known as the Aryans. Wouldn't Hitler have a heart attack if he knew who the real Aryans were? They were a bunch of black folk. Everybody who was worshipping Isis and dealing with mostly a comedic religious philosophy, they said, we can't do this. This is ridiculous. This reminds me, there's no man called Jesus Christ. We ain't never heard of him. Well, Jesus Christ will take Hesus, which was the, the sun god in the West, and we'll take Christos, which was the sun god in the East, and we'll put them together. We'll have a, a name. And so what did he do? A man named Apollonius of Tyana, at that time, who had studied philosophy in Kemet, was teaching. He was a healer, working miracles. He was a hero at that time. So he became the template for Jesus Christ. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.